three clean breaks. If you have three clean breaks and no tries as a winger, that's that's a disappointment from me. But he's he still you know is working hard with the ball. Sam Powell, 41 tackles, 11 of which were marker tackles, playing predominantly out of the hook position in this one. And Ryan Sutton, 43 tackles. So a couple of lads in the pack working hard. Okay, Friday's last game uh, was played over on the plastic pitch and it finished 19-6 to in favour of the visit in Wakefield Trinity over the Witness Vikings in front of 3,681. I had to do a double take on that on that attendance. Um, so things are still poor at yeah. Witness. Let's hope that gets turned around. Robert Hicks was the referee. We did get some things in on this one. Yeah. Um, is this my... No, I need to check this. Is, is that my um, rundown? Is not showing something. Oh, you printed it wrong. Yeah. Are you missing a whole page? No, I'm missing a. I'm missing a. a, a I've got a blank fan view. All oh, right. Okay. Paul O'Brien, 1976, said uh, another poor performance yeah. from the Vikings after tonight's game. We are on six points and bottom, and I'm sad to say that I think that's where we will stay. Silly errors, no idea in attack, and lacking a leader on the field. Team booed off at half time and full time. Just over three and a half pounds. The club is slowly dying, and something needs to change and fast. Oof. Is that the yeah, one? Yeah, just missing? came out as completely blank on mine. Uh, that is strong words from Paul. Yeah, O'Brien. Rich, Rich at H4. NDL3Y. Uh, he's also told us his password if you want it. Uh, both sides. <laughs> I think it is, sir. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, both sides were terrible, and Hicks got a lot of decisions wrong. Same old. Uh, Brian Davies said Great defence kept Wakey in this in the first half, but Witness were terrible in attack. Poor game that got better in the second half. Goal line D is a strong point for Trin. As is beating the weak teams in Super League. Be nice to be someone good for a change. Well, take what you can, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Witness would take beating anyone, good or bad. You got a drop goal. What more do you want? It was a bit of a. It looked a bit ropey on the highlights, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's gone all sorts well, of it directions. It wasn't the cleanest yeah. strike. That that. Uh, so that's that's the that thing bit. this year, isn't it? Ro- ropey looking drop goals. That's that's in vogue now. We had a couple in the last <laughs> few weeks. Well, if they go over, it's it's all the same, isn't it? Um, have you seen much from this one other than the highlights? No, I haven't. The only thing that I did catch my attention was Dennis Betts disappearing to have it. what's been reported as a meeting with his coaching staff straight after the game and then only hosting a press conference over an hour after the final hooter. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's some strong words to to be said uh, at Witness at the moment things aren't going their way at all this was a game that they might have earmarked to have a have a good crack at they, they put out pretty much the same side as they put out last week that was so competitive against the St Helens side uh, you'd have thought on home soil they would have been more competitive than this but they just didn't didn't look like they had any sort of shape in attack they got a couple of they got a couple uh, a a, sorry, a penalty that took him a couple of points up early doors, but then totally physically outmatched for Paulie Paulie's try. I mean, how many players he was it was in and around him and couldn't stop him grounding that ball over the line on that one? If you watch that on the highlights, and David Fafitas, I don't even think they wanted to get bothered with a physical. But no, they were just him he goes, just, on the just over it. Just don't hurt anyone. Just go straight there, Dave. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, just 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 don't injure me, please. <laughs> Not on this pitch. It's kind of the cry. Yeah. Um, so that Wakefield then just took that into the second half and kind of steadied it off, didn't they? By by the looks of of everything, it just a, a defensive effort in the second half. Obviously, saw saw them fine. I don't have much more to comment on in this game, really. No, I've got nothing else else from this one. Let's uh, let's say then that the 16 to 12 error count lost by the home side isn't what you would want to see in a Super League matchup. Stats say Wakey just about edged everything. A few more meters at slightly better average gain and an extra break. Slightly better team tackle success and more clinical at taking their chances. In terms of individuals, Tom Johnson uh, had a bit of a return to form here with a try, nine tackle plus 166 meters and three clean breaks. 
David Fafita had a try. Five tackle balls, 125 metres. Bill Tupu ran hard and straight for 165 metres. James Batchelor, 49 tackles, 10 of which were marker tackles, so he worked hard the other way. In terms of the losing witness side, is there any glimmer of hope out there? Well, there might be some in the effort put in by Hep Cahill. 40 tackles in defence and 119 metres in attack. Matt Whitley is their shining light. He still puts in a performance, 111 metres for him. Ed Chamberlain with 123 metres and two clean breaks. And Danny Craven, who played at fullback in this one, the Swiss Army knife of the Witness Vikings, 100 metres for him. OK, that moves us on to the final game in Super League this week, which was played on Saturday evening. We got to see it in glorious standard definition <laughs> behind the red button on Sky for Catalan Dragons 33, Leeds Rhinos 20. It was 17 for at half time there was 8,779 who watched James Child referee this one um, we had a couple of views in did these come through on your yep, yeah I've got print? all this yep. Alan Walker said how good is leg of lamb both Benji's on the score sheet the leads went well but were well on the strength we're still not where we were when stupid coach, stupid coach Steve's took over and we've had nearly a year of excuses chuck him in the sausage machine <laughs> Despite five wins out of six or whatever they're on, he's still uh, up for a slaughterhouse visit, is Mike Namara. John Hamilton said, Jesus, had John Wells got shares in the Dragons, absolutely desperate for them to win. Leeds didn't look big enough and struggled to win collisions, meaning offloads were forced and play the balls were slow. Jordan Lilly sticking up for Oleski at the end was pretty funny, but this game was mainly a demonstration of the awful injury crisis Leeds are suffering, the likes of which haven't been seen in Super League since dot, 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 2016. Well, try... 2018 at Hull or Hull KR, try 2017 at, at Wigan, uh, you know. Oh, most, yeah. Jam. Cry me a river. <laughs> it, it does get to a point as well where you kind of, as a coaching staff, you have to plan for an injury crisis. You have to have your squad built, re- able to withstand it because you, you know in our game at the way it is and the amount of games we play now, you are going to get a volume of injuries. Yeah. And and Catalan are staring down the barrel of their second player being forced to retire through injury during the season with Paul Aiden, yeah. sort of uh, potentially at that stage with the concussions he's been suffering. So it's not just, you know, toughen up Leeds. Yeah, and, you know, that's why you've gotten, especially Leeds, if anything, have, can make this excuse less of anyone because they've got all their academy players and whatever and all the players they've got out on loan. Yeah. So I, if anyone's going to be making this excuse, it. It shouldn't be. I mean, it would be more a whole KR. I've got a smaller squad. who have got less depth. Whereas if you look at Leeds as well, they've got lots of players who can play across different positions. They have got some resilience built into them. I think the one thing, you know, I do I do appreciate the suffering from, and it was touched on in there, um, with both guys talking about, like, the, the, the size and, and physical strength, um, is that they've particularly been hampered at one position with Keith Galloway never even getting a game uh, really this year with uh, Big Mitch Garbert going down in the front row with the the, the vegan hero <laughs> being out now um, and that sort of stuff they've had a, they've have, they've had heavy casualties at the prop forward position and Nathaniel Petru who they were planning at playing at prop this year being out for large chunks as well so 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 it is one particular position that that they've really suffered with which which is a hard thing to overcome uh certainly but i i just think in this game even though john wells was glowing about the catalan dragons they were the better side they played the better rugby um I, I thought they should have been disappointed in themselves that they let leeds get back into it in the early stages of that second half but really um, they, they were the far better side throughout the rest of the game, other than probably that ten minutes after the after the halftime uh, resumption, because uh, they just were. I mean, the sec both second rowers played really well. Benjamin Julian was particularly impressive for me. Every every time you know I paid attention to the game when I was running through it today, he seemed to be making a a break or running a good line. Michael McAlorum had probably his most influential game for the Dragons, which is crucial for them because he's now their only real senior hooker. Uh, that they've got and they they got more out of the senior players 
did uh, did Catalan in this game. Gigo was good. Remy Casti was good. Michael Seaman was good. So their senior French players stood up as well as kind of the players they brought in that need to that need to show what what they can do as well. So I I, I thought Catalan were actually pretty impressive in this game, and you can forgive them maybe a ten minute lapse given that they've been so crap for most of the year. Yeah, I think I think definitely. I, mean, I didn't didn't see this one. I've only just caught the bits. But uh, Tierney did well to finish that try right in the corner. Uh, I think it was ruled out, though, weren't it? <laughs> I know, you wouldn't think it was, with the flying finish and, uh, and, the, and the photograph in the paper and all that. But I'm almost certain that try was Oh, yeah, it was the obstruction one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but um, I thought the offload by Remy Cassidy in the build-up to Ben Julian's try, uh, sorry Ben Garcia's try, was was very very nice. Um, and I I just think throughout they were they were the better team. The Samba was Simbin in. Uh, have you seen that? Incident? No, I've not seen that. It was a, a a very heavy challenge. It was given for a late tackle. I didn't think it was particularly late, and I don't think he took him high around the head. It just looked so. Violent that I kind of think the referee, the match officials thought it must have been. Yeah, that they had to get a card out for it because um, it did look really, really violent, and and it was a very, very forceful challenge after the ball had got had gone. The ball had only just gone, I felt, but the ball had gone, so I can kind of see that. I would hope that he hasn't had any any other um, anything else from that because I'm pretty, I'd be pretty disappointed if he did. Because it, like I say, I don't think he took him in the head. If he took him in the head, obviously, yes, fair enough. It, it's a ban, but there you go. Okay, um, let's move on to the stats then and then round off things for the Super League match reviews. Uh, so Leeds fell under 1,000 metres and under 90% team tackle success and regular SLP listeners listeners will know that usually means a hefty defeat. Catalans made over 300 more metres than Leeds and had three more clean breaks. They also made six fewer errors and gave up three fewer penalties for a comprehensive stats win on home soil. Individually, Ben Julian with a try, six tackles, 127 metres and two clean breaks. Lewis Tierney, 132 metres. Sam Moore, 121 metres. Mikel Simon, 115 metres. I think there was plenty of good performers in the Dragons side. For the losing lead side, Ash Hanley keeps doing stuff for him in the centres with a try, try assist, 125 metres. Ryan Hall finished off a typical Ryan Hall finish in the corner with, a, with his try. Five tackle bus and 110 metres along the way as well. Stevie Ward, despite going off with an injury that looked pretty serious at one point, came back into the fold. He had 55 tackles, 16 of which marker tackles were marker tackles. So a real um, captain's knock from Stevie Ward in this one. He's definitely put his hand up to be the future captain of the Leeds Rhinos. Uh, Richie Myler was credited three try assists in the game, so he's, he's still getting th- making things happen um, if just not having enough uh, around around the rest of the team, maybe in defence and things like that at the moment. Okay. Do you want to take us through the standings? Yeah, so Saints stay top, widen their advantage to four points over Wigan, who is in second. Warrington are third, enjoying a four point over fourth place and fifth place Cass. Leeds are sixth, Wales and Huddersfield now have stake up the top eight. Sofford have slid to ninth with Catalan 10. Uh, Holkeyer are improving up to 11, and Widnes are rooted to the bottom of the Super League table. Okay, in terms of predictions, we did the Super League. Uh, we did the Super League and the summer back last weekend, which meant there's 12 points up for grabs, and I only got half marks. I let myself down. Day one of the summer bash was not a good day for me. I uh, went 0 for 3 on those. 6 out of 12 for me, that takes me up to 61 cumulatively. The co-host combined had a had a score of 9 out of 12 last week, which is a uh, very credible. Brings us back into contention there. Yeah, it's 59 for the co-host, so it's a, a close margin. So a little bit of pressure on on me now being being put on by you guys. So a good effort from there. In the Super Rude, James Hutchinson stays top. But the yellow cap wearer this week is Catalan's fan, Chris Evans. I always so thought he was a you got the fan first. Yep. <laughs> in the Dream Team, Alan Bagley stays top. I'm just going to leave that in the rundown template now <laughs> and... Uh, Let's see how long we get with that. But it's Liam Reddington with 692 that stormed into the top five with the best score of the week this week. So Liam, you, you know, we normally expect to see Liam around the top. He knows his stuff. Uh, so it's good to see him bouncing back into the top five this week after a strong performance. I made the serious error of not replacing injured, injured players during the week, being too busy during the working day to uh, mess around with my dream team. I uh, forgot Fair enough. To, to correct things there. So, um, so there you go. Uh, okay. 
that is Super League covered. We're now going to move on to other results from around the world of Rugby League. Other results from Rugby League now, and I'll just remind everyone that sponsorship is available for this segment. Get in touch, superleaguepod at gmail.com if you're interested in sponsoring uh, the show. Uh, it was round 15 of the championship. It was the Summer Bash. It was the Blackpool Party. And um, the first championship game of the Bash was a high-scoring affair. It was Sheffield 38. 